everybody. It is Jamie and it is time for day two of the board book that I was working on yesterday. So if you were here yesterday, you saw me working on this cute little pumpkin book because I'm gonna I'm probably gonna save it for October and um, I got it at the Dollar Tree and what I love about it is the pages are really thick because it's one of those like board books, you know, for little kids. And there's only about, there's one, two, three, there's like five layouts. That's all. And then, and then you're finished. So usually I keep a journal where it's for the entire month and there's like 30 pages, you know, because I'll do a daily page. So this is nice because it's just five layouts and then you're finished with it. So it can be like a nice little theme kind of book like I'm doing with the little the little pumpkin on there. Hey, Bev, I see Bev popping on and I see your name and your face. So that's awesome. I'm going to go ahead and bring my other screen in here and make sure that that's all set up so that you can see it. And I'm going to be painting in this little one today. And I haven't done the front of this one. I don't know that I'll do pumpkins in this one. So I um, I haven't painted it. But I just want to show you what I'm doing in this one. And how I kind of set up the two-page spread. And it's going to... it's. I think that it's even less pages in this one. So there's one, two, three... Yeah, just four spreads in this one, just four layouts. So Bev is popping on and she is saying hi. And I see some other people popping on because I just sent out a text message. You can let me know. Oh, Bev says she doesn't have any sound. Oh, that's weird. Try going out and coming back in. I don't know if that makes makes a difference. Um, it looks like on my side, my mic is on and everything. So I see Maxine. Maxine, will you let me know if you have sound? Bev was just saying that she didn't have sound. Oh, look, Robin, I can see your name and your face and everything. So yes, you got it fixed. Oh, there's my mom popping on. That's my mom. And see, can you guys see that picture? <laughs> Probably you usually only see it like teeny tiny, but now you can maybe see it a little bit bigger. Do you see that person all the way over to the right in the white strapless dress? Yeah, that's me. That was the year that I graduated from high school. <laughs> that was our family photo. Let's see. Oh, Maxine said that she has sound. So Bev. Um, oh, you know what? So let me know. Let's see. Carla and Maxine both say that they have sound. Bev and my mom, I wondered if they came in through the text message that I sent. So Carla and Maxine, can you tell me if you came in through the text message or you just got like the notification that I was going live? So um, I know I'm so excited that it works. Oh, hey, here Mel's showing up from the UK. So I'm sorry, I'm kind of like reaching across because my computer's all the way over here. So, oh, so Maxine said that she went in through Facebook. I wonder if it has something to do with the text message that I'm sending because there have been several people that have told me that if they go in through the text message that they um, they don't get sound. So, oh, I see Tammy popping on. She was on last night. Oh, look at the, that big sunflower. I love that. So, oh, okay. So Carla said that she entered through the notification. So I bet that has something to do with it. So if somebody wants to type in there to go to my page and maybe my mom and Bev have already figured that out and they can go out there. But let me go ahead and get started because I want to show you just kind of how I'm setting these two pages up because this is totally different than what I kind of normally do inside of my um, Start Journal Club or show the videos inside of Art Journaling 101. So this is a little bit different because I'm using gesso, which I um, showed last night, and I'm covering these pages so that I can do other things on top of them. Oh, so Robin says that she had to click on that little X on the microphone. So, oh, Maxine says that she went to the thrift store and got a kid's book. 
Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to see that. So if you do this idea of a board book, and I was going to say this like at the end of the video, please, please, please get into my Art Journaling 101 because that's the best place to share if you do something like this and share over there what you're doing because I would love to see your board books, altered book kind of ideas like this using like a kid's book. Oh, I see Stephanie pop it on there. So let me go ahead and switch it. So it's just the one screen if I can figure out. Um, oh, no, that's not it. How do we get this one to? Um, I figured this out before. Oh, maybe it's up here. Oh, solo layout. I'm still learning. Okay, so let me make sure that you can see all of this. So I have the front cover finished. And I'm going to put something on the front here. And I'm working on top of one of these plastic pieces that are the um, the cutting boards. No, no, no. I, I get the cutting boards from the Dollar Tree sometimes. They come two in a pack. And they are like the size of like a placemat, you know, kind of size. So I probably have these like cut in half. But these are actually the pieces from the canvases that come in between. So, oh, I see Linda popping on. Hey there, Linda. So that's what I have kind of down on the bottom. And then I'm going to be painting on these two pages, this first layout here. So I'm going to put this other piece of plastic, acetate. This is a little bit thicker. So... Linda says she still needs to get a book. Yep, just go to the Dollar Tree. And if you saw yesterday, I picked up a couple of different ones. They have all kinds of different. This is a nice size one because there's only like four layouts. And it's, you know, like a nice square. So I'm just going to take. This one's still kind of wet, but I think that it'll work. Oh, let me get let me get one over here. That's still kind of like wet from yesterday. Look, I'm just going to take a chip brush and it has like some of this red on there, but it's it's stained. So, but I'm going to paint this on here and I'm just kind of covering up. And the reason I have this piece of acetate is so it doesn't stick to the page behind it and stay stuck to it. So that's like a little tip for you. And this gesso, you can see, goes on pretty thick. Somebody was asking yesterday, you can use white paint you're not gonna get the kind of coverage that you get with gesso. So gesso is a little bit more, but I only use it if I'm doing something like this. So when we, when you begin in the Start Journal Club, hey, tell me if the light, oh, I see Tracy popping on. Hey there, Tracy, and I see Caroline. Tell me if the lighting is better tonight. If you were on last night, it, tell me if the lighting is better tonight. I kind of moved around my lighting and I wondered if it was a little bit better. I need a little bit more. Last night I felt like it was kind of dark and I had like this this weird like shadow because I don't have good lighting here in my studio. So let me know if tonight is a little bit better. I'm scooting this over because look I didn't have <laughs> you know sometimes you just have to get the gesso on your hands. It wasn't, my piece of acetate wasn't underneath. Look, I'm going all the way to the edges. I'm getting all of these edges covered in the white so that it basically gives me like a, you know, just like a clean, clean slate. Brand new can kind of like the white page, right? So that's all that you need to do to be able to prepare for, um, you know, having a surface that you would be able to do other things on. So let's see, Tracy um, says it looks good for the lighting. I can't see who, oh, wrong one there. I can't see who this person is that says hello lady on there. So if you haven't given um, permission to StreamYard, you need to do that. So, oh, good. She says that she has gesso. Dollar for store for some books. Oh, good. Bev says that she got it now. I wonder, did you have to go back out, Bev? Oh my goodness, who was this that just said? Oh, Maxine got hers for a quarter. Maxine, go you. That is awesome. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I wash my chip brush out. But, you know, sometimes a chip brush is, you know, it's even better if it gets all that texture in the, so 
I don't worry about it too much, but I'm going to go ahead and put this off to the side because I already have the one done that I'm working in to do the pumpkins. So I'm going to lift this up <laughs> very carefully. Pull off to the side here. And I'm going to go ahead and work on this one. Now, I don't have anything underneath this one because I already have done the gesso. So I'm going to open it up like this. And here's the other thing that I really like about these board books is that you have the whole surface open and there's no binding in here. Oh, hey there, Lori. I like your little emojis. Oh, <laughs> it goes faster than I can click on them. So those little emojis. Oh, that's a good idea, Linda. I have an Ollie's near me too. Oh, hey there, Anna. Okay, so on this two-page spread here, this two-page layout. In the Start Journal Club, and really in the Art Journaling 101, but in the Start Journal Club, there are people at all different levels. Some people who have never opened up a journal, never opened up a sketchbook, never kept a journal. You know, we have the, there are beginners. And then we have people who maybe have some supplies. We've got some people who have been journaling. You know, everybody comes into the Start Journal Club because for different reasons, right? And I know last night I was asking um, a couple of questions about how the Start Journal has changed, you know, from like what it was that it's done for them. But I also asked this question in the Start Journal Club, and I'm going to show you like what I'm going to start doing on here. I asked what is the reason that they signed up? And, you know, I always thought that it was to get the box. <laughs> and my start journal, hey there, Melissa, my start journal club told me differently. <laughs> there were probably only a couple of people said that they joined it for the reason of having the stuff. Because what I've been finding is they, they have other reasons that they've joined. I'm going to go ahead um, because one of the things that I also do inside of the Start Journal Club on the um, third Friday of the month. So actually tomorrow is a third Friday of the month. And I'm going to be showing a technique or a way to use a material or, you know, it, I, I call it a technique, but I'm kind of showing them a, um, a, an idea that they could use. And here's the thing, that idea you can apply to a lot of different things. So when you're first starting with journaling, like you're going to see what I'm doing here, or you see what I'm doing here and you try to replicate it. Right. And you just try to, okay, I'm doing a black background. And if you didn't see yesterday, let me know if you saw yesterday is how I did this texture that kind of looks like a cloud back in there. Tell me if you saw how I did that. But you would just take this, this cover and you would do the same thing, right? When you're first starting, you need, here's, here's my plan. Here's what I do. Here's the steps. You know, you kind of need that starting point. And that's what I'm going to show you today is this design here that you can be able to do, but I'm going to show you how I took this idea. Well, how I took the idea from the past pages that I've done and I am adapting it here. So yes, Caroline, I can see your name. So Melissa says that she needed to create and she didn't even know how. Yeah. Oh, hey there, Angela. Yeah. So Caroline, I can see your name. So I'm going to show you this technique here and what I'm going to do, let me go ahead and show you the page where I got the idea and I'm going to adapt it. So when you're first starting, you might copy an idea, but then you start to get ideas and you start to adapt them. So this was a two page spread that I did exactly laid out like this. And I used stars where they're kind of like hanging by these pieces. So I could do another page like this, but what I'm gonna do is take the idea or the technique, and then I'm gonna adapt it to what I'm doing tonight. So I'm not using stars tonight, I'm actually going to use a pumpkin. 
So this is one of the stencils that's going inside of the October start journal box. So I'm going to use the pumpkin stencil and that's going to be the object. So basically when I look at this layout, like what are, what are the things that you see on this layout? I'm going to take a drink of water and then you can tell me. So what are, what are the things that you see on this layout? Like I already mentioned the stars here and it doesn't really matter like how I did the stars, but it's, it's an element, right? So this star is one of the elements in this layout. And what are, what are like some of the other things that you see in this, in this two page spread here? If you were going to, you know, do this specific one, then you would do the stars and, you know, and then these kind of circles like in the background, right? So Linda says like the circles back there. So I started with the, the circles. Yeah. So Caroline says like the circles. And then I have like these circles down in here too. So basically, and then I have, I have these coming down, right? And then if you go into like color, you know, I have a light color, a darker color, and they're, they're kind of similar colors. And then I have like this border, right? So if I'm looking at this page and then Linda says the lines, basically I have an object inside of a shape because it doesn't even have to be a circle hanging from these lines. And then I have, I have words inside those same shapes down here at the bottom. And then Pat says texture, because I love texture. Like I, you know, so like these splatters, I've got like some texture back in here. So when I look at a page for an idea, for inspiration, I'm using it as inspiration for the elements. So if you come into the Start Journal Club and you already kind of have an idea of, you know, an understanding of materials, you might be at the, you know, a, a more advanced stage going through and on your journey of art, of art journaling on your, your path. And you could take an idea like this and then adapt it. So I'm going to tomorrow morning, I'm having a little coffee chat with all of my brand new subscribers. And um, my members don't even know this, but they're invited to this coffee chat tomorrow morning too at 10 a.m. And it's going to be for all of the new subscribers into the Start Journal Club. And we're going to talk about something brand new. So I'm going to talk about that tomorrow morning, about the path that you go on as, a, as an art journaler inside the Start Journal Club. So I'm kind of going through those stages of starting and then taking and copying a layout, and then taking it and adapting it. And those are kind of like the three stages that you go through. So I want you to see this page here, and then I'm going to adapt this and kind of do a similar idea of a shape and a circle, you know, a, a, a lighter shape, a sh uh, object, and then these lines in here. So the first thing that I want to do with this is a background. And if I kind of look at these, I'm going to put two of these pumpkins on here. I'm going to have the background, you know, space around there. And so since I'm going to do these orange, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to use that, that stencil too, I want a color in the background that kind of, in the same way as the front here, I did a complementary color. So orange and blue are right across from each other on the color wheel. And so those are the two colors that I used here. I think I am going to use the same blue that I used before. It's a true blue. And and then I might I might add some other other things in the background there. But then I think I also want to use a little bit of the green. So this is a green, a shamrock color. And then I still have some leftover gesso. So I'm going to use some of that too. Okay, I'm going to use, I'm going to use, I think this brush. I need a paper towel here. 
So let me tell you a couple of the other reasons why some of my Start Journal members have said that they signed up for the Start Journal Club. So my subscriber, Shauna, says that she subscribed to keep her mind healthy. Okay, I am, look, I'm, I'm kind of loading up this brush with like three different colors. I don't know if you can see. I've got some of the green on there. I've got the blue and I've got the white. And I'm just going to do like this. I don't know. I think I might do some kind of spirally. So I thought that that was a cool way that she said that it keeps her mind healthy because when she's creating, oh, I like that green kind of in there, a little bit more white. You know, it, it gives you a break from thinking about other things, right? So I liked how she said that it keeps her mind healthy. And then I had, um, I did have some people say that they, you know, they joined because they wanted to get the box of materials because it's, it's things that they would never think to buy. And that was one of the things that my subscriber, Amy, told me that it, she, she likes getting the things that she would never really think to, to buy. And they all, and then she doesn't have to go out and get them all separately because some of the things that I put in the box, you wouldn't really be able to get um, individually. You know, you would have to buy like a whole set. One of them is like these stencils that I've been putting into the box. I'm gonna add a little bit more white in some of these. I, I prefer kind of like curves and things like that. Oh, I like how Pat says, I feel like it's a safe place to explore who I really am. Pat, it is definitely a safe place. I do not tolerate any kind of, and in the, the art journaling group, the art journaling 101 too, I don't tolerate any, you know, any kind, anything that's not positive and um, encouraging. And, you know, today I did a page and it was about the scripture verse that I read this morning. And it was Philippians 4, 8. And it's the verse that says, Think on things that are true and noble and pure. And I don't know, maybe if you know that scripture verse, you can tell me the rest of them. <laughs> it, Mel says that she loves the community. That is definitely the other thing that I don't even think that, Mel, you realized that you you needed the community as much as you. you like she she is um, she lives in the UK. And I don't I don't know that you really realized that you needed the community as much as. You know, really last year, we all kind of needed the community, right? I feel like there's a lot of green kind of right in here. So I'm going to go in and add a little bit more blue. So, you know, I like doing um, kind of things like this where it doesn't have to be like perfect you know, rather than like all painted in and it adds the texture and things in there. So, and I'm kind of using the white that was underneath there. So Linda says that she looks forward to getting the boxes every month. You know, I really like curating the boxes. So that, that is, I'm glad that you, you like receiving those. So I'm using the gesso, you know, which will add to making this, you know, a little bit thicker on here too. Okay, so I just kind of wanted like this background and, you know, I use different materials in here, but it's the same kind of idea where I have a darker like background. And then where these two pumpkins are going to be here, I'm going to take and I'm going to let this dry just a little bit here. <laughs> Melissa says it's like Christmas every month. Oh my goodness. Yep. So October is going to be like pumpkins. It's going to be like pumpkins every month because um, this is the, these cute little note cards that I used yesterday, but there are going to be pumpkins inside of the, the, um, the, the box. So it's going to be pumpkins. And then I showed last night, the other thing is the Buffalo plaid. So they're going to get their, their box 
and everything inside the box is going to be wrapped up inside of this buffalo plaid tissue paper that they'll be able to use on, you know, inside their journal. So you could even put like buffalo plaid like over your entire page like that. I'll show you what's what else is inside here. I got some new things. So, oh, this person, I cannot see your name. So I'm not sure. Um, we just kind of did the, the background here and I'm just kind of letting this dry a little bit. I just have like a couple of places. My little heat gun is um, not over here where I can use it. Okay, so I'm gonna use I'm gonna use this pumpkin here, and I'm going to I'm gonna kind of use it as a like like as a tracer, not as necessarily like a stencil. So let me show you what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna get some orange. And then I'm going to need some black for the eyes. So while I'm getting these paints out, if there's any other subscribers who um, wanted to say what it is, you know, what's the reason that they subscribed? I had somebody, um, a couple of different people, so my subscriber, Christine, and I believe it was um, Susan, I have Susan in there. And, and they said really it was for like their me time. You know, it was their time. Oh, and my new subscriber, Liz, was saying that it's, it's a way to step away from the hecticness of, um, you know, being around kids and just like household and, and all of that kind of thing. So those were the couple of the reasons why they said that they that they joined. So I'm going to see, I've got just a couple places up in here. So I'm going to kind of work down in here and it's not going to matter too much if it's, if it's more wet. So I have this idea, you know, with the stars where I had kind of like a lighter background in here. So I want to do something like that a little bit so that I can have these pumpkins kind of stand out a little bit more, but I'm going to use a different material. So in my Amazon shop, I have these King Art gel sticks. There's like a glare on there. I don't know if you can see that, but it's King Art gel sticks. And I found these a few months ago. Oh, thank you for being here, Tammy. If you guys could all say a prayer for Tammy. She got tested positive for COVID and she's she's got some laryngitis and just a lot of... Um, just a lot of uh, dry dryness in her voice. I was talking to her earlier. So Anna said, oh, where did it go? Anna says she's not in the subscription, but all of the groups are like-minded people. You know, I believe that that is true. So oh, here we have Melissa saying to feel better. And yeah. Oh, I can't see this person. It says evening all. <laughs> Isn't that kind of funny? Linda says it's always a surprise. So I basically share a lot of times what's in the box and you get to see what's in the box, but to see it in person is different, right? <laughs> so I love that, Linda. Okay, so these gel sticks are what I'm going to use in the yellow for that lighter part of the, um, the, the places where the pumpkin are going to go. So I'm going to take, and these are so much fun. They're awesome for mixed media. They're almost like a lipstick. <laughs> so I'm going to take in this space here. And you'll kind of see that I'm just like coloring this. And I love how it's catching some of the white and it's lighter. It's catching some of the texture. And so it's really bright kind of right in here where it's going over top the white. And then it's kind of mixing in with that, that blue and the green in there. And then this is almost dry up in here. I think I have just about all of it. We'll see. It might kind of mix in with the paint a little bit, but that's okay. So I'm just using that star idea. Which is a lot of times what I do in the start journal. You can take my ideas and copy them. Or you can take and adapt them. 
So Tammy, Tammy says, is it paint? Oh, she's never used the gel stick. You guys who have used these gel sticks, they're kind of like gelatos. Some people call them that. They're kind of like, um, there's a, there's another name that I'm thinking of. They're like, they're, you know, Tammy, that's a, that's a good question. They aren't paint, but I guess technically they're like a, a stick of paint, kind of. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good, I don't know what the material is, but they're like, they're like lipstick because they're so, um, this is the gel stick that I put in the box. I think it was back in March, but you can find this in my Amazon store. So, oh, Robin says that she joined the um, AJ, the Art Journaling 101, and then she saw the club because she wanted a smaller environment. Robin, that is, that is a really good point to make because over in the Art Journaling 101, I think we have about 1,300 people now. And over in the club, there's only about a hundred. So, yeah. And, you know, I think it kind of holds you a little bit more um, accountable, right? So, yeah, Tammy, I'll get a better answer, but it's, it's a gel stick. So, and then here's the thing with the gel sticks. They are water soluble. So I use the baby wipes. I just get these at the Dollar Tree too. And I use the baby wipes because they have just enough moisture that it will activate these. And I'm going to blend this. How fun is that? Yeah, I mean, you could leave it just exactly how it was. but So it's kind of like putting paint down, but I don't have to have the brush. So I could also take my paintbrush, and I'll show you that. I could take my paintbrush and get it wet and I could also you know take and move that paint around or that gel stick you know so it kind of depends on you know that that's keeping it maybe a little bit brighter but I have to kind of keep going into the paint or into the water so it just kind of depends but I like to I like to be able to see a little bit of that underneath I don't know now I kind of like this look a little bit better it's a little bit brighter We'll let that dry for a little bit too. I might I might go back into here. So here's the other thing too. These gel sticks, you can um oh good. You take you take care, Tammy. Oh, oh, thank you, Bev. Oh, Jessica, yes, baby wipes. Go to the Dollar Tree, get some baby wipes. They're fun to use. You can use them with paint, all kinds of things too. I'm gonna actually come back in and go over some of this with the yellow. It might not be quite dry enough. I think it's because there's more blue and green up here, but I like the brighter yellow down on this spot. And this might not be exactly the way that I did this, but it's the same kind of idea where there's this, you know, this like circle around there. So then I'm going to take, and these pumpkins are... You know, they're just going to kind of be on this. I'll tell you what, these are kind of big. I think I'm going to use this instead. I'm going to use this pumpkin, this pumpkin over here. But here, here's what I'm going to do to um, use it. And look, it's, it's like a little note card. I'm just going to pull one side of it off. And you know what? I, I could put these on here if I wanted to and not even... <laughs> You know, and just like consider that, you know, the pumpkin, but I'm going to, I'm going to take them if I wanted to. And I'm just going to take some of my orange paint and I'm just going to kind of use it as a stencil. So it's up to you. I, you know, in the, the one with the stars, I used a little post-it notes. So I, I find things to use a lot of times I saw the little post-it notes and just, Kind of wanted to use those. And so I could definitely use that with the pumpkin if I wanted to, too. Because I don't need to use both of them in there, do I? But I, I am going to make it into a jack-o'-lantern. When I'm working in my art journal, I just, I kind of do 
like as it comes to me. I don't, um, you know, like I kind of, when I was doing the background here, I realized that I had too much blue. So then I went over it more with the white and I just kind of let the colors and what it is that I'm doing and the materials kind of guide me in what I, you know, what I do on the pages. And that takes a little bit of practice too. So when you're first starting out, keeping a journal, doing artwork, you know, I like the journal because I can kind of explore a little bit, right? Remember yesterday I used some red. So I'm going to get some red. Try to remember to store your paints upside down, I realized. <laughs> so I want some red kind of in the edges to give me more of, you know, some darker like values in there. And this layer, oh, there we go. This layer, I probably, um, I will probably do another layer over top of it because this paint is kind of thin. And then I'm kind of using that, that edge and then the yellow that's already on there too. Although next to this, this red, it looks kind of, kind of green, looks a little bit more green than it does yellow. I'm going to paint this in up here, but I'm going to be going over it with the So I'm just kind of like laying in some color just like I did yesterday. But when you're just starting in the journal, you you may just do an idea that I present in the Start Journal Club, like the technique that I'm going to do tomorrow. And, and you may just, just copy it. And, th and that's fine because that's how you learn the, the technique, right? I mean, even the master artists, they copied. They, they copied other artists because that's how they learned the technique. And then once you kind of go through that stage and you learn a lot of how to use the materials and how they work together, then you can kind of take the idea and you can, you can make it your own and you can adapt like I'm doing with the star idea and you can, you can you can let the the paint and the materials and stuff kind of kind of dictate like what it is that you do so now that this is kind of drying i can kind of go back in here a little bit if you let it dry if you want there to be more contrast like i really want that red to show up a little bit more i kind of need to let it dry so it doesn't just blend in so that's a little tip for you like when you're you're painting so I'm going to have these, these um, pumpkins and they're going to hang from these like little vines. And so that's kind of like the lines that are in, you know, in this, the star one that I did. So instead of these lines here, I'm going to use the, um, I'm going to do like some little kind of vines. So I'm going to let that dry just for a little bit. This is one of the stencils that's going in the Start Journal Club. Look, it was kind of wet. So sometimes I don't clean off my stencils. Actually, while I am um, letting this dry a little bit, I'm going to show you some of the, the past stencils. Because tomorrow, the technique that I'm showing to my Start Journal Club is going to have to do, is going to do with the stencils. So let's see. Bev says the Start Journal... Oh, it's been a lifesaver. Look at that for her body, mind, and soul. Oh, thank you, Bev. Bev is my aunt, and she's actually known me for a little while. <laughs> but she started, you know, watching my videos and things. So I just got paint on my, my computer screen. But let me go ahead and show you a couple of every month since... Now I have a fly on my computer screen. <laughs> Every month since February, I believe it is, I've been putting a stencil in the box. 
and I realize I'm starting to accumulate quite a few stencils that are the right size for a journal. So this month we're working with butterflies and flowers. So I love the butterfly one. One month, I think, was it just last month? I had these letter ones. And so they were really fun. And um, look, I could, I can maybe even put be thankful across there. That would be fun. Look, for Easter, I did these fun um, Easter egg. Do you know what these are? Do you know what these little stencils are? These are actually the right size for cookies. So have you ever gotten like the decorated kind of cookies? These are cookie stencils. And this one was one of my favorites. And then I think um, during March, I gave these little mandala stencils. So they were really cool. I'm starting to put some of these stencils inside of my Amazon shop. So um, they will be in there if you wanted to buy the set. All of the stencils that I find are pretty inexpensive. So I know a lot of my um, subscribers have gotten the whole set to be able to use in the art journal. This one's one of my favorite. It kind of looks like stone. And then in February, I gave these heart ones. How you can kind of see that's that's one of the ones that I use a lot of times because it has the spirals. And then um, a couple of months ago, I did the leaves and those were super cool. So I have like this whole set of stencils and now I'm going to have a pumpkin. So each month that you're a subscriber, you're getting a stencil, you know, along with and you can use those stencils in a lot of other different things. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and um, start kind of building this up a little bit in here. And I'm going to I'm going to keep this a little bit more um, like painterly, you know, where I, I kind of blended this one in. I think I'm going to keep this a little bit looser. I might even put like some different colors in there. I don't know when I am. Um, you know, when I sit down to create, I kind of think about sometimes, like I did today, like my scripture that I had and, um, you know, how that kind of like fits in, like with my day. Sometimes I just want to play around with color and, and sometimes, you know, I want to write more. Whatever it is that you do in your art journal is, is completely up to you. And I need a little bit of white. There is really no right or wrong. There is no, um, you know, you have to have writing, you have to have, you know, paint, you have to do gesso. There, there really is no right or wrong. It's about you like expressing whatever it is that you need to express. So like today, I really, you know, wanted to do the scripture verse that I had read and um, I'll let that dry even a little bit too. And so that became like part of my, my page and I'm just kind of like doing some marks in here. I'm kind of leaving it a little bit more, you know, like not as blended. And, you know, once I kind of put some orange in there, me too. I never did go back to this one and put some, some more white in the front. I needed to let it dry a little bit. I really like this kind of like orange and the the yellow and how that yellow is kind of coming through. Now I have too much paint on there and the red's kind of blended in. And I could even take like a little bit of like a dark brown or something like that and kind of come in, even though there's not any of that in there. 
If I want to have, instead of those where the red lines are, if I wanted to come in just with like a little bit of blue and I can have, you know, that's kind of fun sometimes to add like some unexpected kind of colors in there, but I'm still kind of following where it's a darker color and that's where I'm putting the blue. I'm going to kind of do that up in these too. So that's kind of fun. I painted a pumpkin. Um, I don't know. Was it, I don't, was it Monday? Gosh, I guess it was just Monday. And um, it was like that turquoise kind of pumpkin. So it was, I think it might've been this color that I used. And so I'm still using this blue kind of where there's like darker values. So it's a little bit like more abstract, right? But I'm still keeping like the darker values where the darker values are in here. So that's how you can start to play around with like some different colors. But you know, when you're just first starting, in the start journal club you you might not you, you might actually just take this and put it on there you might not even try painting it and you and you you can do that like it doesn't have to there there really is no right or wrong or what it is that you have to do i give the materials in the box or you can do the digital version of the start journal club and you can print out any of the the things that are already in the club or you can um you know the ones for that month are in there so it's kind of fun i'm just kind of doing like a few i know the the leaf is going to go kind of in there but let me kind of show you those up close so i was still keeping those dark values where the red is in there and then just having like a couple of lines like on the outside. So, oh, Bev said that she bought some of those little books. Did you get them at the Dollar Tree? Is that where you got them? I think I probably will put some words maybe going across in here. And then I used a... I use these illustration markers, um, which are permanent markers. I got these at Five Below, and I use this black one here. And I think I used it's they're double sided, so one's like a chisel edge, and one is the the um, the pointed edge there. And that's what I'm going to use to draw the lines. So it's kind of like these like hanging pumpkins. But then I told you I was going to do these as vines. So I'm going to try out the screen and see how well I'm going to use the pointed side. And I like to do kind of like these little these little vine kind of things. Oh, that one's not showing up very well. Let's use the no, it's not not really showing up. Let me try the other green. This one's a darker. It's kind of like a, a blue green. I'm gonna try the chisel edge. So the illustration markers since they're permanent they will go on top of most surfaces they start to clog up like a little bit you know and i'm starting to get like a little bit of the paint pulling up in there just a little bit so it's still kind of the same idea as the stars here 
I have kind of the shape, I have the object, and then I have these lines. I've just kind of adapted it to have, so. <laughs> Robin says, why are there so many pins? I know. It's kind of like, you know, when you go to the bread store and there are like so many different options of bread. Like, I, I kind of get exhausted with, with different choices too. So I'm with you. I kind of want the outer edge of this to blend a little bit more. Um, the values that I had on this one, this was lighter because I took away more of that paint, I think, in there. And then this lighter one, or this the darker back in here. So I kind of want that, I don't know, I want it to like blend out a little bit more. So I'm just gonna take my baby wipe and kind of blend this yellow out. And I like how it, it just is a little bit more subtle. So I'm, I'm using that same idea as the stars, but I just kind of realized that I didn't want it to be as much of a, you know, a line. Oh, I like that so much better. Then it kind of looks like a light or something behind it, right? That's how you get it, Michaels. Pat, but I, yeah, I I have a hard time going to Michael's or Hobby Lobby because there's, I don't know, I don't get as much like that with art supplies as I do like other things, but yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and bring the yellow all the way out to this edge here. So I like how I can still kind of see some of the texture underneath of the, the you know, the paint that I did. I'm going to go ahead and bring this one out here too. And see, I have enough on my baby wipe that I can pull it all the way out to here. Doesn't that kind of remind you of like a uh, like a um, a lightning bug, right? Is that what you call the things that like light up? Okay, I'm really liking the surface of the board book. So yeah, if you. Yeah, I really like that a lot. And then I still would need to do the stems and um, the leaf a little bit more on there. So I've got some, some paints on here. So I think this leaf, I want this side to go off this direction and this one. So they're going like in two different directions. So I see a lot of my subscribers on here tonight. So because you guys were curious how I was doing the, the little board book. Okay, I need some brown. We'll see how well the brown goes over top of this. And you could definitely mix a brown too. If you, Do you know what colors would make a brown? I think I'm going to get like a little bit of the orange. And maybe just a little bit of the black. I'm going to go down here and do this one first. So see, I have a little bit of all of those colors in there. And then it, it just kind of blended on the canvas, the board book, the pages. And it just kind of like blended in there for me. And I, I think that that just creates like a more interesting. And I don't have to like paint all the variations. Oh, good, Mel. You said that you were able to find them at like a thrift kind of store that you said you have. Yeah, it's kind of fun because they're just, you know, they're just a few pages. Um, made some darker values in there. You can do like kind of a little theme, you know, with them. So they're kind of fun and just the, the thickness of the pages, you can just do, you know, some different things. Had to hold that, that down a little bit there. So I'm gonna let that dry because I need like some other values in there. 
And then I'll go ahead and do So when I mix the colors, even over here on the my little tray, I get these at the Dollar Tree too. Um, I don't, I don't really mix them. You know, I keep a couple of, I either double load my brush or I just, I kind of really loosely kind of mix it just so that there's um, some variation of color in there. And I'm not even going to really paint that in. Oh, I really like how that color is different than the, the background. And I might add a little bit of lighter kind of in there too. I don't have any yellow on here. But when you're mixing colors, think think about that, that you... Um, you don't need to, you know, completely mix it because it makes a more interesting color. I like that one in there. It kind of kind of comes into that that blue. So I'm gonna let those dry a little bit, and I might put some lighter. Come back in with just like a little bit of white. And then if I have too much paint, I can wipe some of that off and blend it a little bit more. It's kind of fun on the leaves to like show a little bit of the texture and it just just gives a little bit more texture in there. I can't really see this leaf. I need like some more, um, but I need to let it dry. If you're not getting what you, you know, this, there wasn't enough contrast between the stem and right here, they're, they're kind of about the same value and I need more contrast kind of in there. This one has darker edges in there. I just need to wait for that to dry to kind of build up that that edge a little bit. But the, this is the idea. So when I do a lesson inside like the technique tutorial tomorrow that I'll do, it's just an idea for a layout, which means that you can take that idea. You could take the same idea and do hearts. You could take this same idea and do. Um, you any kind of shape that you wanted to do, you could do flowers in like, I don't know, like hanging down from there. You could do circles, you know, hanging from there. It's the idea of the layout is the shape, the lines, you know, the lighter kind of color like behind there. So it's just kind of taking an idea, like I could do the same idea on all of these pages, right? And I could vary it so that you know, on this one, I would have a different color maybe for the background and I would have different sizes, but maybe it would still be pumpkins, right? So, oh, Robin said that she has a puny Dollar Tree in Florida. Oh, we do have like, it, it, it depends on which one I go to because I have several, they have some crafty areas. Yeah. So they have like the, the craft sections. Yeah. But when you're, you know, when you go out onto Pinterest or you're on YouTube and you see ideas that people are doing, don't think about taking those ideas and copying them. Think about the technique that you're using, you know, they're using. There might be a specific, like I use the gel sticks, you know, so take whatever material maybe it is that they're using and then look at how their layout is laid out, right? So, you know, whatever, maybe they have one object up in the corner and then the rest of it is writing. So that's a layout and you could take that layout and kind of adapt that idea, right? So that's when I'm looking at something and using it for ideas. That's, that's what I'm doing is looking at the elements of what make the layout. So I didn't really have an idea what this was going to look like beforehand. I just kind of knew that I wanted to take this idea of lighter in the background an object and the strings. Really, those are the elements that I was I was looking at. Right. 
So, but I'm, I'm liking how it turned out because of the texture. I like the, the transparency of the yellow. It kind of makes it look like they're lit up or something. Um, and you know, I was going to make these jack-o'-lanterns and now I kind of like that they're, I paint them in pumpkins. So let me go ahead and I'll switch this one off the main view here and then go to this one. There we go. So that was just kind of what I wanted to show you tonight and just talk about what it is that we are doing in the Start Journal Club to kind of get people from just starting, being overwhelmed, not really having a plan, you know, kind of having materials, not knowing what to do with them. And then they get to the stage where they're learning and they're kind of being held accountable inside the group for posting and, you know, we're encouraging each other and, you know, trying to put posts in there every day. And you're going through those stages where you're learning and you're, you're kind of maybe copying some of the, the cover tutorials or the technique tutorials or even some of the ideas that I do during the Spark and Inspire, which is when I take all the materials that you get inside the box and just we just brainstorm of different ways that you can use all the different materials. So I'm going to show my members tomorrow how to use their stencil in a brand new way. And that's the technique tutorial tomorrow, but it was the stencil I used last week to be able to show ideas for how they could use in their box. But tomorrow is specifically gonna be one of the items and, and showing a technique. So we we go through those stages and, and then, then you finally reach that third stage where you're taking and you're creating something that inspires you that is very heartfelt and you you get to that stage and and you don't you you don't even need to look at ideas on pinterest or youtube and you you already have this so many ideas that you just don't have the time to be able to to put them down because you have so many different ways and and one idea leads to another and you know you can take this oh now i got to do it this way and there are so many different ideas and so that that's the third stage of when you you have really become an art a, a, per, a person who does their art journal pages that really does them from their heart right that they get inspiration and they are inspired by things that mean something to them and and that's that stage that in the start journal club you know trying to move towards that stage maybe not every single page would be like that but you're getting to that stage where you're trying to take things that you've learned and and um, figured out and try and and now now you have that knowledge to be able to do a page on your own without having an idea. It, it really is something that is creative because you thought of it. So, you, and Laura says she wishes that I could you see. Well, Laura, you'll see the example when I post the picture. But yeah, yeah, you got to be in the club to be able to see those things. So, um, but I'm going to go ahead and finish with this and kind of let this dry and I'll add some more details. I will not be on tomorrow to do another page in here because I already have some videos scheduled for my um, my Start Journal Club tomorrow. And then I actually have an in-person paint party where we are painting these cool sleds. So I might do a quick little video tomorrow to show the sleds because they're super cool. But on Saturday, I will be live inside of the Art Journaling 101 group and I think that I'm still going to keep that exclusive to the Art Journaling 101. So if you are on here and you are not in my Art Journaling 101 group, you got to get in there so that you can watch the video of me doing the next page in my little board book inside that group. So you got to get in that group to be able to. I'll post the link for that afterwards. But if you go to Art Journaling 101, you'll find it out on Facebook. Anyway, I hope that that was fun for you guys to be able to see how I took a page, took a board book, and kind of used an idea and, and kind of adapted it for how I wanted to do it in here. So I kind of went from the stage of, you know, like not having an idea, 
using an idea that I saw, learning how to do it, which I did with that star page. And now I created the page. So I kind of, I kind of just took you through all of those stages of being in the start journal club from a beginner and all the way to an artist really where you're creating from your heart, completely inspired by something that you want to do. So Lori says it sounds so interesting. Well, you will see it tomorrow um, when I post the page. So that I do from the, so I'll, I'll have, it'll probably be like later in the day. Cause I don't know what time exactly I'll get back from the, the in-person party, but I appreciate you guys showing up tonight since this was a different time than I normally go live and that this was a fun way to be able to see. It sounds like several of you are going to try the board book idea. So I can't wait to see those. So I will see you on Saturday. Hopefully it'll be at three o'clock Eastern um, to do page number three. Well, page number two, actually, because I did the cover and then so. Um, oh, you're welcome, Bev. You're welcome. So I love coming on and knowing that you get inspired by the ideas that I show to you. So that's, that's why I keep sharing. So, and this little board book is kind of a fun way to be able to, you know, to do the pages in a row and then have it finished on Sunday. I have it finished on Sunday is my plan. <laughs> so very good. Well, thanks for joining me tonight, everybody.